Since humanity's first trip to space, cosmic scientists have been fascinated by the possibility of visiting galaxies beyond the Milky Way. Such galaxies are usually several astronomical miles away, and very few can be seen with the naked eye. But the hope is that humanity will one day have the required technology to visit one of them. But when that time comes, which one will it be? Join us in today's video as we explore the closest galaxies to the Milky Way. Home to planet Earth, the Milky Way galaxy is a huge celestial element. It measures between 120 to 180,000 light years from one end to the other. Even if you travel at the speed of light, which is practically impossible, you'll need 26,000 years. And if an object, for instance the Voyager 1 spacecraft, travels at a speed of 17.3 kilometers per second, it would need at least 1.7 million years to complete a year around the Milky Way. Aside from hosting our planet, the galaxy is also home to about 200 billion stars, including our Sun. It's no secret that the Milky Way galaxy is not the only galaxy that exists in our universe. In fact, the Milky Way is part of a local group that contains more than 50 galaxies, including the large and small Magellanic Clouds, which we will talk about later in this video. Up until the discovery of the Sagittarius Dwarf Elliptical Galaxy, SAGDEG, in 1994, scientists believed that large and small Magdalenic clouds were the closest galaxies to the Milky Way. The SAGDEG held the position until the Canis Major Dwarf Galaxy was discovered during the 2 micron All Sky Survey, which lasted four years between 1997 and 2001. Funding was provided by the National Aeronautics and Space Administration and the National Science Foundation. Over the course of this research, which was a joint project of the University of Massachusetts and the Infrared Processing and Analysis Center, scientists collected 25.4 terabytes of raw imaging data covering 99.998% of the celestial sphere. This efficient collaboration allowed scientists to learn about 70% of the sky. It also led to the discoveries of 5,790 celestial sources of infrared radiation. Infrared astronomy has become an important aspect of space exploration, especially in discovering new galaxies and planets, because unlike visible light, infrared light is not impeded by gas or dust. And that's another factor that delayed the discovery of both the Sagittarius Dwarf Elliptical Galaxy and the Canis Major Dwarf Galaxy. Infrared astronomy takes advantage of advances in astronomy that see more of the universe, since infrared light is not blocked by gas and dust to the same extent as visible light. This has helped cosmic scientists to discover some Class M giant stars in sections of the sky where the Canis Major constellation is located. The Andromeda Galaxy, or M31, in the Northern Hemisphere is another galaxy that has been considered as one of the closest neighboring galaxies to the Milky Way. But despite the fact that it is gravitationally bound to the Milky Way, it is about 2 million light years away. Discovered by Magnellan in 1519, both the large and small Magellanic clouds are housed in the Southern Hemisphere sky. But specifically, the large Magellanic cloud can be found in between the Dorado and Mensa constellations. Scientists estimate that it is 10 times smaller than the Milky Way and contains 30 billion stars. Also, the mass of the Large Magellanic Cloud is 300 times smaller than that of our galaxy. However, it remains the fourth largest galaxy in the local group, only behind the Milky Way, the Triangulum Galaxy and the Andromeda Galaxy. Basically, they are unstable dwarf galaxies that orbit the Milky Way galaxy. The Large Magellanic Cloud is a bit closer to us at a distance of 179,000 light years away from the Milky Way galaxy while the Small Magellanic is about 210,000 light years away. That's more than twice the diameter of the Milky Way and three times farther from us than the SAGDEG, which is 70,000 light years away from the Earth and 50,000 light years away from the center of the Milky Way galaxy. And according to the theory of numerical modeling, scientists at the University of Pittsburgh believe that this galaxy is responsible for creating the Milky Way's arm structure. And we should mention that the SAGDEG has crossed the plane of our galaxy multiple times already. 
The last time it passed by was about 150 million years ago. So you've got to wonder why scientists didn't discover it earlier. Well, based on the space scale, it's true that the SAGDEG is close to the Milky Way galaxy and with a diameter of 10,000 light years, it is quite big as well. But early scientists couldn't see it because it was dim and it was obscured by the centre part of our galaxy. In fact, the SAGDEG is so close that some of its stars are spread out in the outermost regions of the Milky Way. The representation of the SAGDEG as depicted on the nearest galaxies image is nothing more than an artist's interpretation of the concept. The only original image of the SAGDEG that's available to us shows the galaxy in the radio wavelength. With that said, if humans were to relocate to another galaxy outside the Milky Way, chances are the SAGDEG wouldn't be our first option. Because, as we mentioned earlier, there's the Canis Major Dwarf Galaxy, which is 42,000 light years away from the core of the Milky Way, and only 25,000 light years away from our solar system. This means the Canis Major Dwarf Galaxy is closer to us than the centre of the Milky Way, which is 30,000 light years away. According to researchers, the Canis Major Dwarf Galaxy has an elliptical shape that is estimated to contain 1 billion stars, which are mostly red giant stars. Analysis of the Dwarf Galaxy shows an extended filament of stars wrapped around it. The Monoceros Ring, as it's called, is 200,000 light years long, and it was first discovered at the turn of the 21st century by cosmic scientists carrying out the Sloan Digital Sky Survey. We're told that the probing of this ring of stars and other star clusters around the Sagittarius Dwarf Elliptic Galaxy was what led to the discovery of the Canis Major Dwarf Galaxy. Interestingly, the discovery and exploration of this galaxy have been a major contributing factor to the theory of cannibalism among stars. This theory suggests that galaxies can grow or expand in size by feasting on neighbouring galaxies around them. In fact, our Milky Way galaxy is said to have eaten up some part of the Canis Major Dwarf Galaxy. That ultimately explains why stars from the Dwarf Galaxy are part of the Milky Way. And since we're here already, we should also mention that other globular clusters, like the NGC 1851, NGC 1904, NGC 2298 and the NGC 2808, were together with the Canis Major Dwarf Galaxy before its accretion. Although they're considered the two closest galaxies to the Milky Way galaxy, accessing them is quite difficult due to the limitations of our current space transportation system. The Voyager, which is the most travelled space probe in the world, would need approximately 750 million years to travel 25,000 light years, and even if we travel at the speed of light, we still need about the same time to complete the trip. For perspective, Mars is less than 200 million miles away from our Earth. But so far, scientists have been unable to send manned spacecraft there. And that brings us to our next point of discussion. What does the future hold for the Canis Major Dwarf Galaxy? Scientists speculate that the galaxy is gradually being pulled apart by the gravitational field of our Milky Way galaxy. Already, the external part of the Canis Major Dwarf Galaxy is undergoing degradation and it's set to continue even as it orbits the Milky Way. With time, this process is extended to climax, and the Canis Major Dwarf Galaxy will eventually merge with the Milky Way, hence depositing its one billion stars into our beloved galaxy, meaning we may not necessarily need to travel outside our galaxy to visit the nearest galaxy to us.